I tell the story, uh, the story of a more beautiful world in all its dimensions. And so what do we have to do to make an economy operate according to ecological principles? So I think what's happening now is that humanity is entering into adulthood and the crises that are converging together at our time, you know, not just the financial or economic crisis, but an energy crisis, healthcare crisis, ecological crisis, soil, water, et cetera, et cetera. These are, in a way, they're the coming of age ordeal that one must pass through to enter a state of adulthood. Money is different from any other substance in the universe. All other substances return to their source. They are impermanent. But we've created money that seems to violate the law of impermanence. It is imperishable. What would happen to society? What would happen to people's motivations if money no longer was an exception to this law of nature and this law of spirit? The money system we have today, which actually compels endless exponential growth, is part of this broader story. And that broader story is coming to an end also as our efforts to, to control and dominate nature aren't really paying the dividends that they used to. More and more of their earnings, of their income, of their life energy goes to servicing debt. But because the debts grow ex exponentially, that can't last forever either. And this is the crisis that we're seeing today. This is what is underneath the financial crisis. It's the end of growth. Say we have a planet, and we can either liquidate planet Earth right now for $60 trillion for maybe 10 years, so $600 trillion. Or we could live on Earth in perpetuity for maybe you know, $5 trillion a year. Economically, the rational choice would be to liquidate it. I mean, it's absurd. You think we would never do that, but as a matter of fact, we are doing that. You buy something and the transaction is over and the relationship is over. I don't owe you anything, you don't owe me anything because I paid for it. And we have kind of this ideal of financial independence or financial security, which says, I don't owe anybody anything. I owe nothing, I don't need anybody, I don't need your charity, I don't need your gifts because I can pay for it, thank you. And, and it's not just in economics, it's in, in biology too, the selfish gene, um, this, this sense of ourselves as being separate from each other, separate from the world. The connected self is a very, very different story of, of self and a different sense of self, where it's no longer you know, two separate beings having a relationship, but in some sense, like my very being depends on everything else in creation. Like we know this in our hearts. If when another species is, is, goes extinct, or when you see a bulldozer plowing down a forest, you know, like you feel a sense of loss. You feel something, at least I do, you know, I, I feel that, that like something has been torn out of me and I've become less. We're not supposed to think about, to say, well, I'd really like to do this, but I'm not gonna make money, I won't be able to survive, so I better do what I really don't wanna to do to make a living. We rebel against that. You can do it for a while, but it hurts. That the fulfillment of our life purpose is not supposed to be a struggle against survival. That either you have to survive and do what is, is practical and makes a living, or you have to do what, what speaks to your heart. It's not supposed to be that way. The universe is supposed to support us in our gifts. But fortunately, the kind of money system we have now has its own collapse built in. Unless you think that uh, economic growth can continue exponentially at the rate of interest forever, it's impossible, mathematically impossible, to sustain the money system we have today forever. Examples, but anything that, that um, connects us and joins us in, in giving to the earth and in creating with the earth instead of taking from the earth uh, has a place in the new story of money.